Hello and welcome to Box Office Receipts. I'm your host Tyler Callahan and right now it is a quieter week in Hollywood than usual as we maintain our waiting pattern for updates on new releases and theaters reopening. Let's head into the pipeline. So I would say the biggest news coming out this week is Universal punting most of their horror movies until next year. The biggest of them are the Halloween sequels, each taking a year back respectively. So now Halloween Kills will come out October 2021, and Halloween Ends comes out October 2022. This summer, along with F9 and Minions 2, Universal was set to release the Forever Purge. Well, we got a new day for that, and that's coming out July 9th, 2021. A lot like Minions 2, it is getting almost an exact one-year delay. Their other horror movie, Candyman, gets pushed to October, now coming out October 16th. To appease some fans, Universal and Bloomhouse did release a short 30-second teaser for Halloween Kills, giving hints on how Michael Myers survived at the end of the first film. So while this sucks, it's clear Universal, a lot like Sony, has basically given up on this year and is trying to get everything in order for next year, which is not the worst move, especially given the situation the United States faces right now. Sony, for its part, also moved another movie to next year, the live-action adaptation of Monster Hunter, which was set for September, now comes out next April. At this point, it is Warner Brothers and Disney that have the films that they really need to release, and with the sharp increase in cases in Arizona, Texas, and Florida, I don't see the August release happening. Assuming those states all enforced mask wearing and did a partial shutdown at minimum, you are not seeing a downward trend in cases and return to normal for a month at least. So under that timeline, oh look, Florida has a situation under control, let's open movie theaters, yeah, even under that timetable, which would be great. Theaters would not open till September at least, but they are pushing for schools to open, so I don't know. Speaking of theaters reopening, theaters are now suing the state of New Jersey to force a reopen. The Big Three, AMC, Regal, and Cinemark have filed the suit with the National Association of Theater Owners leading the charge, claiming a First Amendment right to reopen. The case is that some indoor buildings have reopened at a 25% or 100 people, uh, 100 person capacity, including museums, libraries, and churches. But others like gyms in this lawsuit and movie theaters are not and have to remain closed. Not only that, they are to remain closed with New Jersey giving no timetable on when they would reopen. Well, I may get some flack for this, but I support this move from them. This opinion is not just, oh, so I can go watch movies, but it's on the idea of if churches can open, why not theaters? Both are usually smaller places people pack into, so if theaters can enact their safety plans, I don't see an issue with it. For museums, I do understand where they can open if it's big because you can walk around, there can be easier social distancing. But yeah, if churches can open, so can theaters. At the very least, New Jersey should give dates for places like theaters and gyms to reopen with a limited capacity so they know they don't have to keep uh, waiting. But yeah, if you have different thoughts about this, let me know on Facebook. A small note about AMC, the theater chain has reached a finance deal that will inject $300 million into the company. This will help them stay afloat longer into the year as reopening gets pushed back more and more. From what I have seen from the details, this looks like a good deal. They get about $300 million and you can possibly cut down debt by $600 million, which is also a good thing. I would say if theater companies are smart, they should be making backup plans of being closed till the end of the year, and look at reopening around Christmas if things get worse. We do have a small box office update through the U.S. with Empire Strikes Back in first place for the weekend with $611,000. Thanks to Disney allowing drive-in theaters to show episode 5 of Star Wars, the movie has reached first place at the box office 23 years later after its special edition release. This brings the total domestic gross to $290.9 million. I will say whenever theaters open, if they do show Empire Strikes Back, there is a small chance of it passing $300 million domestic, which would be very interesting. Going over to Shanghai, it looks like theater owners will be getting a subsidy from the government to help offset some of the losses they have faced so far from being closed uh, so far. Variety is reporting that the $2.6 million will be given to 345 theaters in the area, with the amount being determined by the amount of screens each theater has in their 2019 gross. I think this is a good move from the city to help keep them afloat, but I do wonder if other cities will need to do this at some point. As for the Shanghai Film Festival that is supposed to happen at the end of the month, no confirmation on that actually happening just yet. Let's go to movies that are in development. So a few weeks ago I reported on the Ryan Gosling Wolfman movie at Universal, a part of their new attempt of a line of monster movies. Well, they may have found their director. Deadline is reporting that, that Le Wano is in negotiations to direct the movie. If that name sounds familiar, well it should, as he just directed the last monster movie for Universal. 
The Invisible Man, which so far was one of the few movies to release in theaters this year. The article goes on to say what Gosling and Wendell have wanted to work on for a uh, project for a while, and this seems to be their opportunity. Deadline also mentioned that this movie is on a fast track at Universal, so if I had to make a prediction, this comes out summer of 2022. Ryan Gosling in a monster movie seems like a good fit in the summer window. They spend the rest of the year getting the script done, fill out the casting, and the next year, film, post-production, then release in May or June of 2022. I'm also accounting for some possible delays given the pandemic, but yeah, if I was in charge at Universal, this is clearly a summer horror movie. Another movie that may or may not be in the works is Luther. The BBC show starring Edith Elba has run for five seasons so far, and Elba has reiterated the movie continuing the show is in the works. This was during a virtual event promoting another show of his in the long run. Quote, there isn't a real form or plan for Luther at the moment. I've made it very clear I'd like to see Luther come back as a film, and I can tell you this, that we are close to this close to making a film of Luther. End quote. He has also hinted again that if a movie was to happen, it could move away from its famous London backdrop for an international one. I've been curious about this movie for a while. I've watched four out of five seasons so far, and while pretty good, at the end of season four, I thought the show was losing a bit of steam. I do think an international setting could work, given the writing, which off the top of my head, Luther would have to go rogue, as he is a London detective, he's not in my six. I also wonder if this does happen, is it a TV movie, aka premiere on BBC and Sky, or will it actually go to theaters? I would prefer theaters, but I feel like it would be BBC for the UK and VOD for other countries. Taking a look at Disney's next moves, Variety is reporting that Jude Law is in talks to play the role of Captain Hook in the live-action Peter Pan movie. I've heard rumors about the move for a bit, so I guess after The Little Mermaid, it makes sense to do this as well. Variety is also reporting that right now, this is a live-action remake headed to theaters, not Disney+. Plus. I think Jude Law is a great pick for the role, but for me, this movie does not scream excitement for me. The sequel to Train to Busan, Peninsula, is getting a theatrical release in the U.S., Distributed by Will Go, Potentia will be opening in 150 screens across the country August 7th and will then go on to AMC's streaming horror site Shudder in 2021. Note that this is AMC Network, not AMC Theaters. I would be surprised if this actually happens and not get pushed back. Though with only 150 theaters, and they are, so I would assume, okay with not getting the New York and LA market, then they, they could probably go ahead next month and see what happens with the limited release. So, VOD Premium is a bit short this week. The main story is Peacock's imminent launch, and like HBO Max, will not be on Roku and Amazon Fire TV at launch. The only thing said about this is a lot like Warner Brothers, they are stuck in negotiating terms for distribution. With now two major streaming services not on some of its biggest platforms, it does have me curious on what is going on in these talks. Either it's Amazon and Roku trying to flex their market share and getting a better deal, or Comcast and AT&T are like, nah... Fuck that, you need us more more than uh, we need you. I know if they ever make a deal, we will not know the details, but I hope they leak so we know what the exact issue was. Besides that, Peacock will still be on a lot of options, including Apple TV, PS4, Xbox One, LG and Vizio Smart TVs, and Chromecast. Finally, if you are looking for some movies to watch during... Finally, if you are looking for some movies to watch on streaming or VOD, I have two to recommend, Palm Springs and Greyhound. Palm Springs may not seem like it, but is a romantic comedy that is perfect, being in your home 99% of the time for weeks on end. Greyhound is a simple World War II action movie. Not much on character development, but you see some tense fights as Tom Hanks leads the ship, as leads ships across the Atlantic and faces off against Nazi U-boats. Palm Springs is available on Hulu, and Greyhound is available on Apple TV+. And that will be it for this week's episode of Box Office Receipts. If you have seen Palm Springs and Greyhound, let me know what you think on my Facebook page. Link to that is in the show notes. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.